crowded, hectic scene here. The fans have smashed through the barriers once. Oh, 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 quiet a minute. Quiet a minute. How long have you been a Bowie fan? Three years. Do you think he's changed? Yeah, he has changed, but he gets better every time he changes. Are you going to see him this week? Yes. Yeah. We've got five tickets. What do you think is so good about Bowie, then? Oh, everything. He's so original. He's so original. He's original. All right, well, there's some boys here as well as the girls. Why do you like Bowie? He's got, he's got different styles every day of the week. How long have you been a Bowie fan? Since I was 11 years old. Now, why do you like him? He's brilliant. There's nothing else like him. How how long have you been waiting here today? Since about 12 o'clock this morning. Now you're hemmed up against the iron door. You're not finding it all rather uncomfortable? Yeah, but it's worth right. it. It's the only oh, one. Oh, Are you going to a concert this week? Yes, tomorrow. We go. How much did you pay for the ticket? 275. I've got six tickets every night, £22.50. Oh, no. I'm going every night, and he's number one, baby. He's just a great. Too much. He's too much, man. He's too much. He's too much. He's too much. Well, as you've heard, it's very hectic, rather wild here. How long have you been waiting? Um, since about uh, half twelve. Half twelve. Now everybody says Bowie is very different. Why do you think he is? Well, I mean, he's got this. He's got this image which um, one can associate with, and he's uh, he's uh, great. How long have you been waiting? So it's the same time since half past twelve. Do you think he'll be very nervous returning to London? I don't know, really. I mean, he's been away so long. I don't know, he, I hope he's looking forward to it, see all his fans here. Do you have a favourite Bowie track? Wild as the wind at the minute. That's off the station to station. Yeah. Now, why, what do you think is good about TVC 15? I don't know, I just love it. I love it. I think it's a great track. I can listen to it over and over again. I just, it's great. Do you think Bowie will go on and on and on? Yeah, um, it'll go on a hell of a long time. Yeah, I don't know if it'll go on forever. Did you like his movie? I haven't seen it yet because I haven't got any money. Now, are you going to behave yourself when the train comes in or are you all going to scream? I'm trying to stop the squash him. We'll all be dead. <laughs> I hope not. Maybe, maybe. Just one message. This is to all capital uh, listeners. listeners. I just wish they could be here to see what we're Beautiful. Well, he's getting a fabulous reception. How many people do you think are here today? We are all capital listeners. Yeah, yeah. I've yeah. yeah. well, just got three to seven. I listen to it all time. Okay, Kenny well, let's be very Kenny patient. Andrew. Let's hear the cheer that you're going to do when that train arrives. Okay. I was walking down the high street. And David Bowie really can afford to chuckle these days. As everyone is keyed up for David's return to London this afternoon, we thought we'd have 15 or 20 minutes of Bowie nostalgia on Hullabaloo. Record-wise, memory-wise, and those facts and figures in case you really have forgotten David's biography. He's the son of a children's home publicist and was known in the early days as Davy Jones. He was a tough South London local lad, and at 16, a single punch nearly cost him his left eye. David was a student at the Bromley Technical High School and dropped in, and dropped out apparently, of commercial art design. He changed his name from Jones to Bowie, and as they say in the trade, a star was born. He joined the Lindsay Kemp mime troupe, and the rest really is history. Jamming good with Wed and Gilly And the spiders from Mars He played it left hand But made it too far 
became the special man. Then we were diggers back. Ziggy really sang. Screwed up eyes and screwed down hair too. Like some cat from Japan. He could lick on by smiling. He could leave until high. Became on so loaded, man. Well hung snow white tie. By 1972, it was clear that the rise and fall of Ziggy Stardust and the Spiders from Mars was a bestseller, and Bowie received much critical acclaim. His talent as a producer was obvious on the early Lou Reed album, Transformer, and again, do you remember that hit, All the Young Dudes? Well, he wrote it, and he allowed Mott the Hoople to really get right up there in the charts with it. Space Oddity and the Man Who Sold the World was a favourite with fans and still is. It shows the autobiographical nature of David's character. An indeed Hunky Dory album was quite prophetic. Do you remember this title? <laughs> And things really were changing for Bowie. At his home in Beckenham in Kent, he spent a lot of time writing songs, but also developing his arts lab, an arts laboratory where he gathered around himself a nucleus of artists specializing in mime, dance, and poetry. One of the fruits of this time was Space Oddity. It was originally recorded in 1969, and it was reissued last year. It went right up that capital countdown and was a number one hit. Ground control to Major Tom. Ground control to Major Tom. Take your protein pills and put your helmet on. Ground control to Major Tom. Countdown engines on. Check ignition and may God's love be with you.
And that really is one of my favorites. By 1973, Bowie's status was sky high. His collection of popular rock tunes from the 60s was a great success with everyone. Great party music. It's very good. It was packaged beautifully. And he presented it to us in the form of an album called, of course, Pin Up. was in the form of a dog. Diamond Dogs was Bowie's theatrical project extraordinaire, full of images of urban decadence and visual splendor. from Bowie, and the British tour in 1974 really did incorporate much of this theatricality. He was dazzling on stage. I really think he is the king of glitter. Poor Jean Jean is into the city, strung out in blazers, slashed back blazers, ate all the razors, were boiling the waiters, talking about the road, talking on Snow White. New York's a no-go when everything tastes nice. Poor Jean Jean David's live album recorded at the Philadelphia Tower Theatre. No doubt he'll be singing that one next week at Wembley. Well, I said earlier that I thought he was the king of glitter, but we read that his image is changing. He's no longer wearing that glittering jacket. He's meant to be wearing a white dress shirt. I spoke to him earlier on. Is this really the case? No, it just looks like a dress. Is it true? <laughs> no, I'm wearing a white shirt and a pair of black trousers and uh, they come from a shop called Sears Roebuck in America, which looks, is a bit like Burton's. Well, dress or not, we'll have to wait and see next week. Bowie's Young Americans album, featuring his million-selling single, Fame, co-written by John Lennon, was a monster. Bowie liked the subject, Fame, and he's quoted as saying, It's a good topic for me. I was always destined for it. <laughs>
Well, as you know, fame hit the screen and Bowie's film, The Man Who Fell to Earth, is now on. I asked him what it was about the role that attracted him. I didn't have to put on a funny hat or, or sing rock and roll. No rock and roll. Well, the latest album, Station to Station, certainly has plenty of it. I recorded that in California. Um, at some studios, uh, pretty studios in Hollywood somewhere. There was uh, a swimming pool and a uh, free rise in a chalet and they had a tape recorder as well and so I recorded it there. Well, I'm sure that's likely to join the other nine multi-million seller LPs. Bowie says he prefers branching out and taking chances rather than playing safe artistically. What about the future? I think I've got two, two big things to do, which is uh, one is to do my next album. I've got my own album to do, as Ron Woods is. And then I've got to, uh, I'm doing a, um, an album with Iggy Pop, late of the Stooges. Um, I'm recording him. And after that, really, I'm sort of anybody's. Well, David, here's to plenty more golden years. David's train has arrived. Did you have a smashing journey? I'm tired and I haven't eaten. And yes. <laughs> Where have you been? You've been all over the world as far as we can see. Yes, I left out India. That's about it, really. Turkey, a few sort of oriental things. Did you like Russia? Um, yes, it's uh, it's no um, it's no penge, but it's <laughs> it's quite good. It's quite fun. I wouldn't stay there for long. Eight hours. Well, I'm going to whet your appetite. The fans out there are going mad. They've got a marvellous welcome home. They think possibly you've changed. They don't know if you're the same, David. Do you think you have? Yeah, I've changed this morning. <laughs> yeah, I smell sweet. Yeah. What did you miss about London when you were touring? Um, that's that's it, really. London. There's, you can't... I wouldn't... Uh, having grown up here, I, I couldn't take a bit out and say, I miss that. Mm. Miss the toilet paper. <laughs> Do you feel nervous about tomorrow's concert? No, I'm excited, very excited about it. Nervous? Nervous in a very theatrical manner, but not, not uh, paranoid. Really. Have you found that the show's gone down better at certain places than others, or not? Um, yeah, I guess so, but no one country, all countries have received it the same way. I think they find it very new, very exciting, because it's uh, stripped down, it's not... Um, it doesn't look like um, an old glam rock show. It doesn't look like a circus. It, it's it's probably the, the bearer show that's been seen a long time. That's interesting because we've been reading that the Stones have got a massive entourage and it's costing them over a million pounds. How many people have you been touring with? Uh, with me personally, three. And what about lighting equipment, massive? You no, know, we've got some lights. We've got some neon tubes out of offices. But um, I, know, I, saw, I saw the Stone Show a year and a half ago in America. I know the thing. I know what they're using. Um, yeah, it's a lightweight show. I think with the band and with the, the, the road crew and lighting people, there are about 25 people in all. And it's, it's very enjoyable working with them. I'll be there to see it. David, the last time we talked, you were about to see the movie. What did you think of it? 
I was terrified. It was a terrifying thing. It, it shook me up a lot. I, was, I, think. I didn't expect it to be that potent, very potent movie. Has it inspired you to do another of that kind of thing, that kind of movie? Um, yeah, I think I like the Stark Syndrome. I've liked that from, since I was an art student. I think intensification of people's uh, um, moral um, uh, um, growth and, and the way it gets dissolved and decayed is always interesting. I'll become an old roué in the next film. What about mimes? Do you ever do any of this on stage, or no. is that the olden days? No, that, I, yeah, I drink a lot. <laughs> I do not wish to hear about that. We thought we'd ask you if we were inviting you to take part in a special Bowie TV show that we were going to put Ooh. on. Who would you like to be on with you? Who would you invite as your guests? Oh, uh, I don't know who's in England at the moment. Oh, we'd get them from anywhere. Who would you like to be on your show? Christopher Risherwood. <laughs> uh, Maxim Gorky and uh, <laughs> Mark Bolan. <laughs> well, as we're sitting here, David's been handed a Pepsi. I must say, I don't envy you travelling in a small carriage. Do you actually enjoy train journeys? I love them, I adore them, yeah. I think it's it's far too easy to go by plane. You you miss uh, the, uh, the desperateness and the, uh, the hardship of travelling. I like the hardship of travelling. I like to know I've left and left one country and made an actual effort to get to another. And it, um, it's a very important part of my life is travelling, is, is with any entertainers. I, I want to make the most of it, so I do do it to its fullest. Have any funny I'm things extremist. happened, David the Extremist, whilst you've been travelling? People come in and say, oh, excuse me, I didn't know you were here. What, in this train? Not in this one, there's nobody on it. <laughs> What about other trains? Other trains. Oh, yeah, yeah. I pick up a little bit of language and, you know, and just talk about what people are like. And it's very easy going on the trains. From station to station. Were you pleased with this? It's, I'm sorry? Were you like pleased it. with station to station? I like I like station to station. Um, yeah, it, it, uh, it was a good album. Not every album is very good, but... It's like painting. Not every painting's very good. It's, you know, you do as many as you can and try and do something, different picture, and some of them are good and some of them are rotten. David, <laughs> it, David it's been lovely meeting you. We've got to go because your fans are waiting. Can we have one hello message for all Capital listeners who are so keyed up for your return? Oh, smashing, yeah. Hello, everybody. I hope you're smiling. I want to see lots of smiling faces in London. I've missed that a lot. Good luck with the tour tomorrow. Thank you very much. <laughs> Nice one indeed, David. Nice one, Maggie, for fighting through them all and getting there and getting the interview an exclusive on Hullabaloo. One thing I must point out, lots of people standing around outside the Euston Tower here waiting to meet him. He's not coming here, but instead I'll play this one for all of you and, of course, for the man himself.
TBC, one fly from David Byron. If you can manage to get any tickets, his concerts are from tomorrow right through to Saturday at Wembley. Good luck, David. All the very best. Don't forget, people waiting outside Capitol, he's not coming here. Sorry, folks, wish we could bring him, but he's gone off to his hotel or wherever he's staying over here.